Hey everybody, Christy Rice here and I am at Zion National Park and I decided to do a video for you um, from the park. So I am that crazy lady who's been carrying around her tripod and other various very bulky setup materials on and off the shuttle. And uh, yeah, and people are probably staring at me right now because I look like I'm talking to myself, um, which I technically am. But anyway, I am at um, the Grotto, which is a shuttle stop in the park where um, the trailhead for Angel's Landing, which a lot of people have heard of Angel's Landing. If they've heard of Zion, it's kind of the trail to do. It's the one that goes crazy high and there's chains you have to hold on to. I've never done it. My husband's done it like six times and my mother. My mother has done it. So it's kind of a famous spot here in the park. Um, but the reason I'm here is uh, we've just wrapped up four days of plein air demonstrations from artists all over the country that have come here to Zion, have been invited here um, to share their knowledge and their skill with us. So literally, um, I've just been immersed in learning from them. What a perfect time uh, then now to uh, share with you a little bit about what I'm experiencing here and how it kind of plays into my philosophy and I keep looking over there because there's a dude staring at me but it's okay it's okay what I've learned here ties into my philosophy of making art for joy's sake um, forgetting the rules often forgetting what's quote-unquote right and remembering joy uh, so yeah so let's dive in so basically um, the artists here primarily were oil painters um, there were three watercolorists um, and several pastel artists and there was a ton of talk as you can imagine a ton of talk about rules um, and I use rules I don't mean to use it in a negative way I just sometimes rules can be a little limiting for a beginner a lot of talk of rules value study sketching perspective atmospheric perspective I mean all sorts of things um, underpainting like all of the technical stuff but the one thing that I kept coming back to as I was thinking sitting there and it's so hard for me to just sit and listen to someone but it is really important um, and I posted about that on Instagram recently it's very important to realize that you can be learning and experiencing and absorbing information not just while you're doing but while you're listening and one of the things that I kept coming back to as all of these incredibly talented artists who far exceed my abilities in terms of technical skill perspective and all of that um, one thing that I kept coming back to was something um, that I was reminded by something that one of the artists said um, her name was Susie Wolf and I believe it's pronounced Susie or maybe it's Suze I'm not sure but her name is Susie Wolf. She's a watercolorist. One thing that she said to the group, and she had passed out a paper uh, with a ton of different things, a bunch of mantras for painting. But the first thing that she said is that watercolor favors the bold. I'll say it again. Watercolor favors the bold. And it certainly does. And so um, she wasn't a very highly representational painting. I'll show you a little peek at some of her work here. Um, both at Zion I believe so not like hyper realistic um, lo obviously she loves color oh there's one of the shuttles Hi. Um, she loves color but I love hearing her say that because that really um, affected me and and my philosophy of painting which as you know is is one of freedom and is one that really um, is paramount Jo where joy is paramount in the experience especially for beginners and this is what I started to realize because I don't pretend to have all the answers I don't pretend to um, always be in incredibly consistent I may so say something while I'm painting and then contradict myself two days later while I'm painting again but one thing that I realized art for joy's sake forget rules, forget right, remember joy. All of that is really powerful for beginners or for those who haven't painted in decades and are getting back into it. And this is the reason why. Once you've reignited that passion for painting, you can always get into the nitty gritty. 
you can always throw yourself into learning technique and maybe um, mentoring with someone that you admire tremendously or just really grilling yourself and uh, with all of the um, the how to's and the specifics of your painting skill and craft um, but in the beginning what is so important and what I see happen so often is in the beginning you're nervous you're scared you're tentative um, your hand shakes when you start to paint I know you guys have been there um, even if I go two days without painting I'll go back and my hand just doesn't feel right when I start touching the page so what happens in the beginning when if when you are only concerned about rules and you put yourself in a position where you feel like you just need to pay attention to the rules and the techniques and all of that is that you can easily very easily get discouraged and that's where my philosophy comes in I don't want you to get discouraged I want you to paint and I want you to keep painting and I want you to get that exhilarated feeling that will keep you painting because as an artist I've been painting I was just calculating it the other day. I'm sitting on a shuttle coming to one of these stops here and I'm like, how long have I been painting? And it's been almost 30 years <clears throat> that I've been painting. Obviously not as an adult, but if I count uh, my childhood when I began, and honestly I'm counting it because I painted like a fiend when I started and I never stopped. Notice about myself in all of those years and as I've evolved, I get easily discouraged. And I'm someone that paints almost every single day and I get incredibly discouraged in, in a very small amount of time and so I, I, I think to myself my goodness someone's sitting there with the blank page in front of them a brand new set of paints new brushes that they've never used and then on top of all that they've got to figure out how to use all that stuff in the right way that's incredibly incredibly intense and has the power to be incredibly overwhelming and ultimately for a lot of folks just starting out has the potential to just completely put the fire out. That's really what I want to talk about today. And watercolor favors the bold. So in the beginning, as a beginner, be bold. Use your materials. Don't worry about if you're doing it right. Don't worry about value quite yet. Um, if you want to, pick up books and read and learn and get into all the technical stuff. But if you find that it's freaking you out, pull back and just play all right so today I'm going to uh, do a demo sorry guys there's just a lot going on around me and I just realized there's a job Johnny back there that like matches my pashmina which is kind of hysterical <laughs> so, um, so I am going to do a demo for you today I will hold up what I'm gonna work on here um, ignore this side um, I've started it here. It's just a, a little view with a cottage and um, a little bit, um, a, not a little, little bit, but um, some really grand rocks in the background. Um, I guess I'll let you see this one. This is one I'm working on um, that I'm kind of struggling with. But <clears throat> anyway, so I'm going to be doing a demo of this today. This is just the very beginnings of it. And I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably like, holy crow, she's got sketching in there first and um, lots of colors going on. Um, so I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to sketch it again uh, so you can see my thought process with that um, and paint. So uh, I really hope you enjoy this experience and I hope you enjoy I'm gonna cover up the job Johnny I hope you enjoy um, your little view of Zion here uh, yeah let's get painting okay everyone getting started with the demo here now please keep in mind I've actually relocated for this demo and I'm still outside um, and it is pretty windy so I think the camera's gonna shake quite a bit um, hopefully not too much, but bear with me. So I'm going to get started here. Uh, I have this one piece that I did earlier today. And so I'm actually working from that piece. So uh, one bit of advice is to do a really, really, really quick sketch for yourself um, that you can then work from the sketch. Uh, painting, dr uh, sketching, drawing outdoors can be incredibly intimidating. Um, I often, and I know there are a ton of artists out there that would just cringe at what I'm about to say, but I will often take a snapshot with my iPhone 
and I will work from that. I kind of use it as um, a traditional viewfinder, so to speak. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, work, feel free, work from uh, an iPhone snapshot, uh, do a quick little sketch with very few lines and very few details, and then, and then do a more, in, you know, in-depth painting from that. So I'm just using a mechanical pencil here. Um, and what I do when I sketch, because I know that it's a big thing, a big question I've asked often, is how, how am I sketching? What am I thinking about? And so what I'm thinking about here, especially with um, red rocks and these kind of towering cliffs, um, is there is just a lot of sheer faces. There's different textures, different things going on um, with, with these cliff faces as the rocks have um, you know, fell away over, you know, um, millions of years. So uh, I'm kind of trying to capture that. I'm trying to think about, okay, is this flat? Is this jutting out? Does this look like a cone? A lot of these shapes here look like cones upside down and right side up. Um, I'm adding in directional lines. So, um, you know, to make something look curved, I'm going to add in lines that curve. To make something look straight, I'm going to add in lines that, you know, are straight. See, there I just added these kind of radiating lines from the top of an area um, that look more like a traditional butte. Um, and if you don't know what a butte is, it basically is, is a rock mountain that's skinny at the top and flares out at the bottom. So um, don't be afraid to erase. Uh, think about when you're sketching, just drawing lighter in the beginning so that when you do erase, uh, you're not left with a horrible, horrible um, dark, dark mark. Now you will notice um, I didn't erase fully. I'm not too worried about it. And you'll see at the end when I'm putting in the sky, it's not a big deal. Now I'm going down here to add in this little cottage. And as I mentioned before, I am at the Artist Invitational in Zion and um, the Plain Air Artist Invitational. I am not one of the artists, but I attended and and listen to lectures and watch the demos. And one of the things that one of the gentlemen said um, was that um, don't get too detailed with architecture because often in these kind of paintings where you're kind of loosey-goosey, kind of a really casual style, the more detailed you get, the more it doesn't make sense in the context of everything else in your painting, especially if everything else in your painting is not as detailed. So I love that he said that, it was fantastic. So keep that in mind. Now you noticed um, I did something earlier here with my pencil. And the one way that I figure out the angles of things is I literally hold my pencil up in front of my face and I overlay my pencil with the direction of, let's say, the edge of a roof, so the roof line. And I see what angle that roof line is at by holding my pencil right over it. So I basically, I'm, I'm kind of like trying to trace in the air, trying to trace the roof line, the direction of the roof line with my pencil. Um, and then I basically go ahead and try to repeat that angle, that line on my sketch. Uh, so that is a great trick. Um, I'm gonna try to animate that for you here so you can really see what the heck I'm talking about. Um, but using your pencil as, as a way to kind of figure out angles is something I do all the time. So uh, going back to my philosophy of painting, which you know is very much um, just really forget rules, not to get too hung up on rules, um, forget what you're supposed to do that is quote unquote right or wrong, um, and, and just really enjoy the process. And so here I'm going in really lightly. The wind is starting to pick up, guys. I apologize, um, but that's on plein air painting. Um, I'm really going in here with some lighter tones just getting um, really kind of washy, water-filled brushes of color in here. Um, and again, if you began working from a photograph, you can go back to that photograph if you do want specific reference points for color and whatnot. Um, I'm really just referencing the sketch that I did because I really just want to just have fun with this process and not worry too much about making this look exactly like what uh, my original subject subject matter did. I'm going in with uh, soft tones, oranges, yellows, pinks, um, dusty kind of uh, purples. Um, so where I'm using strong color is where the light is hitting the surface of the rock. Um, again, where I'm using strong, bright color, saturated color is where the light is hitting the surface of the rock. So if you're outdoors, you just think about, for example, because um, I know all of you aren't going to experience red rock in Zion. Think about a tree that's in the sun. 
Think about, you know that kind of sparkle that you see in a tree where um, some of the leaves just literally seem to be like on fire, bright, bright yellow or bright, bright orange. That's the part of the leaf that's being hit directly by the sun, where the sun is almost so bright and so direct on that leaf that it's kind of bouncing back at you. Um, so you can think about your landscapes the same way. Um, the really bright areas that you're seeing in person if you're painting outside, um, those can be, those are what the sun's hitting the most. So if you want to try to capture that bright sun-kissed look a little bit and get a feel for that in your painting, use those brighter tones there and then reserve your more muddy tones like that gray, add a little blue into it to give it some vibrancy those can be kind of the cracks of the rock and the and the areas that are not that are in shadow moving on to the cottage here um, I am just adding in a bit of alizarin crimson or any kind of just kind of dark burnt red color and again I don't like to reference specific colors too often because I want you to use the materials you have this roof is actually green um, so I'm adding in a bit of green here with a little bit of umber one of the umbers I'm not even sure which umber it is just a brown um, I'm using uh, I held up the brush there I'm using a dagger this is from Rosemary and Co brush company um, using that I've been using that all week here I'm just really enjoying it um, but you've heard me mention um, the Royal and Langnicker dag dagger before love that as well and that would work just as nicely here um, same concept you can use a broad edge a short edge the point um, and really have fun with it so I'm really going back here looking at my original seeing where I had those darker kind of muted colors seeing where I had the brighter colors I'm looking at my original sketch to see those kind of directional lines I have curved directional lines in those cone shapes I have directional lines in the rock face that's more smooth going horizontal I'm wanting to add a little bit of sun uh, kissed feeling down here by the uh, the cottage the idea of this painting and I'm going to do a part two of this so you can see for those of you who want to see more detail but really even without a part two the idea of this painting is for you to really experience that freedom of going out and just showing my palette here of going out and just painting outside and not being so worried about making a mistake and messing it up and how do I and when do I and what do I use and so on and so forth all right I'm going into the sky here I just took a really pretty blue I'm using mission gold I'm using the point of my brush I'm going on to dry paper look closely I'm I am leaving a very, very, very thin white edge between the part that I'm painting and the, um, the edge of the drawing. You can see it there. There we go. I am leaving that. Again, just a lot of color on the page, on the dry page. Now, a clean, wet brush. I'm taking along and letting that spread the color out. This is a really great way, and again, I know some long-term fine artists who've been painting a lot longer than me, or maybe who haven't and just really like classical technique are probably cringing right now, but that's okay. Uh, this is just a really stress-less way of painting a sky. Um, and you know, every sky that I do, I do with this, some version of this technique, um, and but they all end up looking different and I just I love the the feel of it I love the the bursting effects that I get I used a different color blue on the second pass there um, and guys remember I am not going to finish quote unquote finish this painting uh, I will do a part two for those of you who might want to see more detail but this is really just about encouraging you um, to get outside um, use your iPhone as a viewfinder be bold not worrying about making a mistake and and trying out this landscape painting uh, technique uh, this you know taking my philosophy that some of you have been so awesome you followed along with taking it and seeing how you can apply it to the landscape thanks so much again everyone for following along I know this was a quick one but my point here was to just really enjoy the process really enjoy the experience of painting outside and not worry too much about too many rules all at once. Hopefully you can take away some really quick tips 
to just have a really fun and joyful painting experience outdoors. Until next time.